how I understand the algorithm, or rather, audience, because that's what it often gets confused with. See, the goal of the algorithm is to find that audience for you so that you can just focus on making better video, stream, or make shorts. It wants viewers, and it's not just there to give you an audience, it's there for the viewers to stay on the platform and to give them the videos that they want to watch to ensure they don't go anywhere else. In a perfect world for YouTube, which definitely would not be perfect for us, viewers would never ever leave. They would just watch for their whole life. Never get a job, just watch YouTube, that would be, that would be the equivalent. But this Basically, that's not going to happen, so it tries to replicate the next best thing, which is just get them to stay as long as we can. Great for us creators, but you know, how do we get people to stick around? That's why you gotta think of the viewers and not of the algorithm. The way that the YouTube algorithm pushes out the videos to the wide sea of viewers is a little bit rigged, but not in the way you think. See, they claim that the P-score, the preference score, has been eliminated from the algorithm, but I tend to disagree with that because it seems like large channels can do just about whatever they want and then it's not just the audience that allows them to make whatever videos they want with or without effort and gain views and more subscribers but it's also because the clout they've already gained youtube lets them just get away with stuff <coughs> so cool. anyway apart from that the thing is that the algorithm tends to favor the channels who have already have proven themselves to be successful also a misconception that the algorithm is creator focused it is actually viewer focused it takes the viewers want and finds the videos that match that viewer as closely as it can to ensure that it can the viewer continues to watch video after video after video. And just remember, see, the algorithm takes your video and it, and it processes what's said, it processes the video's transcript, the title, the description, and any tags that may be attached to the video itself. And then it looks at your channel and its description and its past performance to get a feel for who the perfect viewer for that video is going to be. See, this is the part where having an established channel can be beneficial because the longer you are on YouTube, especially the bigger you are on the platform, the more likely the algorithm already kind of has a core audience to test your videos out with. It's not always, the core is not always going to be made of the people who already subscribe to you. Sometimes it's going to be people who they aren't subscribed to you, but they watch your videos or maybe they've never even heard of you. I know it sounds a little wild, but that's just how the algorithm works. It's called RNG. Sometimes you can have good RNG and sometimes it downright just sucks. This is also why sometimes videos will tank immediately and then quite literally years down the road suddenly explode because the YouTube algorithm is just searching and searching and searching for that perfect viewer and that can take a while. Sometimes it finds it quite fast and other times it's like kind of makes you scratch your head and wonder is it even doing that? Is it even looking? Which it is and I forgot to take my headset off. Just now realized. <laughs> Wow, I'm taking it off. Another popular misconception is that the algorithm straight up hates you. When in reality, the algorithm wants to be your friend. It wants to help you. But how can it help you when it doesn't know what you're about or who the perfect viewer for your channel is? That's where the shift and balance kind of starts happening. And oftentimes, people blame the algorithm. The algorithm is nowhere as near as difficult as what people perceive it to be. The algorithm is pretty simple to understand on. It wants people to look at a video, click on it, watch Watch it, click on another video, watch, click on another video, watch, and so on. In short, it just wants people to stay on the platform. Whether that's watching one video for 10 hours or watching 10 videos that are an hour long, it doesn't care as long as, oh hey, they're staying for 10 hours versus 10 minutes? Sweet, let's just keep doing that because it's clearly worth And so what this means is the biggest issue that people have is not the algorithm at all, it's the audience because people are confusing. Now going back to the core audience for when a video is getting pushed out, the more that people click on a video and watch it, even if it's just for a short amount of time, or if they leave a like, or they leave a comment on it, the more interaction, the more that the algorithm sees that, gets a grin on its face, and serves it up for even more people to enjoy because it notices that people are liking this, so this must be a good video. Now, sometimes you get a lot of impressions, like thousands of impressions, but you barely get views. Now, this can happen for a few different reasons. This happens to me all the time. 
time, and here's why. Algorithm can't find a core audience. The video is performing well, so the algorithm just keeps pushing it out more and more and more and more, which brings your click-through rate down the more impressions you get, which can kind of be a bittersweet thing. You could be popping up in search, or the algorithm is experimenting with different niches and trying to bring in completely new types of viewers to your channel, which again is bittersweet because it helps you out with potential new viewers, but on the other hand, you may not be getting anything back from those viewers. You might not be getting any comments, any likes, nothing. And that just kind of sucks sometimes. It happens with me like on every video. The algorithm is more inclined to push videos that have these traits. The core audience clicks on it, there's a high view duration, you get good watch time, which you can kind of trick the algorithm with with making people watch the video at a slower speed that will get you more watch time than what is technically possible in a video. Has more interactions, that's likes, dislikes, and the comments. Title is extremely easy to understand, as well as if it's part of a binge, session so like if it's in a playlist or a, a series or maybe just a cue that viewers create to watch a bunch of videos if it has one or more of these traits that's when the algorithm starts pushing that video out to more and more and more people anyway so this creates the snowball effect of more interaction with the video gets pushed out to more people who interact with it more pushes it out more viewers more interaction and so on and so on how does the algorithm pick this core audience it analyzes the video to figure out what type of video is it is it a cooking video is it a gaming video is it a how-to video is it a singing video it actually looks at your channel description not just a video description it looks at previous cores that it's used for other videos in the past to try to gain a little bit of repetition you know a little bit of a pattern and then it actually looks at cores from similar videos from other channels that are not you and of course most importantly what does a viewer need what does a viewer want what does a viewer desire it takes that into consideration and does all of this in a very 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 rapid pace and then afterwards it takes the information of how that video performed how many likes it got everything and then it uses that with other videos to complete its analysis of how to continue to push that video out as well as how are we going to push out future videos for your channel coming back around to the preference score this determines whether your channel is going to be successful or not now youtube has claimed that it the preference score is no longer relevant i would beg to disagree because it's been proven that the bigger you are the better off you will be on youtube which sucks for smaller creators like me because i don't know how to make good videos so i'm just doing what i can to get by and i uh yeah the, the way the preference score is rigged is because if you're a small channel your p score is set very low unless you're a celebrity then youtube decides that you're pretty good you're up there and that you need to get out in front of lots of people which is not really fair at all. I will say in the last few months on YouTube, I have noticed that YouTube has started being a little bit more favorable to new channels, which is kind of nice, except I'm not a new channel. So I'm kind of stuck in this rut here where I'm not big, I'm not new, where do I even fit in anymore? Then let's have fun and confuse the algorithm. Hold on, what do you mean confuse the algorithm? It's not even alive, you can confuse it? Yes, you can, and here's how. See, the algorithm can get confused when you start making several videos from different niches because it's not sure on what channel are you? Are you a cooking channel or a gaming channel? Or are you a dance channel or a singing channel, or a music channel? What are you? You're kind of all over this place in this kind of category type of situation. And it doesn't know what to make of that. And even if you do a bunch of things within the same niche, just a bunch of different sub niches, I can confuse it too because it may understand, okay, you're a gaming channel, but are you an FPS channel? Or are you a platformer? Or are you a sandbox? Like, what are you going with all this? Now, another way to confuse the algorithm is you focus really heavily on one niche like I did with gaming and then all of a sudden you pivot around and now you're doing a completely different niche like for me I did gaming and now I'm doing YouTube tips and I'm probably gonna change to vlogs and so right now the YouTube's trying to figure out okay you were doing this and now you're doing that who's the audience for this new 
content you're making while it's also still searching for viewers for this other content too so it's trying to find content for two different niches basically which brings me to shorts no i'm not talking about pants youtube shorts have a completely different algorithm just like the long form and the live streams get impressions before they get views for shorts views are impressions they're the same thing they don't get impressions like normal videos the way that shorts algorithm works is it just pushes up videos to as many viewers as it can as it see fits that it think it will like which sounds a little bit like the normal algorithm you manage to make a short that has over 100% retention, especially if it's a loopable short, that is how you get your short to just straight up explode. And you may think, well, you're not a shorts creator, what are you talking about? I did expand my shorts for a while, I got like 600 views short of getting 40,000 views on just one short, and that wasn't an accident. Before I posted that, the most I gotten on a short was about like 2k, and I had a feeling that this was going to be 5k, or maybe even 10k views, and I ended up getting about four, a little under 40,000 views. It was no accident, it was planned it was on purpose and i can tell you com with confidence if i really wanted to i could do that again they don't feel like they fit in right with this channel as of this moment now i will say that shorts do help us with discoverability a lot if you make the shorts from your normal videos and not as a standalone content because when you make it as a standalone content you're building a completely different audience within your audience and that can actually harm your channel if you take specific clips from the videos you've already posted or the videos you're working on then link those videos together people who find your channel through shorts can look at the videos that the shorts were created from and get converted from just watching your shorts to watching your long form as well and then your channel can balloon and explode over time